He's gonna guess, right, isn't he? The precious ring. Or nothing. Two guesses at once. Wrong both times. <laughs> Come in. I won the game. You promised to show me the way out. Did we say so precious? Did we? So you shouldn't trust them. No! Oh no, here we go. He really, a, he really is a damaged person. A thing, isn't he? It's kind of a tragedy. What has occurred in its pockets? In its pockets. pockets is dead. Oh, he's angry. That's me after a game of Call of Duty. Oh shit, run, run. That was a great scene. It was great and not so great to see Smeagol again, aka Gollum. Thank you. Better late than never. He's already saving their asses. <laughs> Down goes the big bastard. I saw in the comments when Gandalf was saving Frodo and Sam, he had a third bird as well, maybe to save Gollum. Which is kind of sad if you think about it. Oh, he's stuck. I'm getting Temple of Doom vibes for some reason. Gandalf. That'll do it. What the fuck was the what the fuck was that? I thought he was pretending. That was so anticlimactic, like, what the fuck? That'll do it. <laughs> it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Oh, maybe they should have run into Bilbo. He's around there somewhere. How has he still got his hat on? That's really impressive. That's the most impressive thing about battle. Oh! How how are all these dwarfs still alive? You do realize, Bilbo, if you kill him, you'll save your nephew and his friend a lot of trouble, and in future movies or previous movies. Go to him. Oh, that's frustrating. That is so frustrating. It's what Gandalf said, isn't it? The courage to not kill him. The free, yeah, that's what it goes back to what Gandalf said. Bless you, Bilbo. Bless you, Bilbo. Full of courage, just like Frodo and Sam. Brush your teeth. Use Colgate. Master Baggins saw his chance and he took it. He has thought of nothing but his soft bed and his warm hearth since first he stepped out of his door. Ah! Uh, shut up! <laughs> He is long gone. Come on, show yourself, Bilbo. 
Bilbo, show yourself. Don't annoy me. Show yourself. No. He isn't. Dwarf King, you pessimistic dickhead. Bilbo, we've given you up. How on earth did you get past the goblins? Oh, indeed. We're talking about the ring? The ring of Mordor. Yeah. You doubt me. I, I, know, I know you always have. And you're right. I often think of Bag End. I miss my books. And my armchair. She's understandable. Garden. See, that's where I belong. That's home. You don't have one. A home. It was taken from you. But I will help you take it back if I can. Give me a hug, Bilbo. <laughs> that guy looks ridiculous, but I love him. Gandalf's like a proud dad. They become best friends, too. Ugh. Fuck off, old Bino Dwayne Johnson. Into the fire, run. I love Gandalf's voice. And into the fire. I can't do it. And into the fire. <laughs> Gandalf the Grey. Into the fire. Oh. He ran right into that. Well done, Bilbo. Bilbo even Bilbo's like, what the fuck? Dead end. Shit on it. Shit on those nipples. I thought I was gonna break. Ah, uh, like we did in Return of the King. Trying to bait you. Ah. Uh, don't listen to him. Uh -huh. This is me going to the shop during COVID times. I'll play this music. Mm. Get off your fucking thing and fight man to man. Come on, dude. You could argue his stubbornness and his need to avenge and holding on to grudges. This is downfall. Damn, he's getting his ass kicked. Still gonna get get involved. Oh no. Hobbits have massive balls. Did someone told me in the comments they actually do have massive balls. Which is hilarious. Hey, up! Get the fuck out of here, Bilbo. Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Does that big? Albano bitch, escape again. With the big orc <laughs> and dwarf king. I was gonna say <laughs> it would have been funny if just dropped him on purpose for no reason. <laughs> this is a weird thank you. I was gonna say, what a weird thank you. <laughs> what a strange, strange thank you. Hobbits. Oh, he's self deprecating. Kind of similar to Fellowship of the Rings when Sam and Frodo can see Mordor. I do believe the worst is behind us. I wouldn't be that hasty. 
But you got that big dragon, haven't you? He's sleeping underneath all that gold. There comes his eyes. Hi. Hello there. Hmm. Also directed by Peter Jackson. And that was The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. And I had thoughts going into this, really live up to the Frodo and Sam dynamic and all those pieces, Aragorn too and Gimli. And no, it doesn't in terms of characters, but having Bilbo and having Gandalf, a younger version of Gandalf the Grey, seeing Saruman, seeing a um, younger but still deranged um, Smeagol slash Gollum, um, Lord Erewhon, whatever his name is. It's great to see these younger versions of these characters and Bilbo too. And Bilbo goes through a a big transformation too, and he doesn't, especially when it comes to his relationship with, with the the king, the dwarf king, um, Fearon. You know, at the beginning and even near near the climax, he, he is doubtful if he can he can even hold his own with compared to all these other dwarfs, and that's saying a lot because. Most of them are older, and they're not really fine material, and um, and they he looks down on on um, Bilbo and Gandalf. Obviously, has a lot of faith in him, and it seems like did Gandalf just pick a random Hobbit in the beginning? Like I forgot, I didn't really catch anything. I don't, I don't know if I'm, sure, I don't know, I'm not sure. Did he just pick a random one? It's like, okay, Bilbo. Let's pick this guy named Bilbo, this Hobbit named Bilbo, and. It was nice to see Frodo in the beginning and having an older Bilbo and then transition into a younger Bilbo. And the first one, of this ends the same way as Fellowship of the Ring where Sam and, and Frodo see Mordor and they say, oh, we're here now. It's just about getting there. But when Bilbo says it's the worst, we've gone through the worst, uh, that's not be... Uh, that's a bit too optimistic. The comedy in this is just as good as it is in, in the in, in the other trilogy, even though he didn't have Gimli in this. He still, he still had other dwarfs that kind of have similar 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 aspect in terms of stupid things they say, and they are, most of them are half wits, to be honest. And and um, we see what the dragon. Well, we saw his eye open. He's slipping underneath all that gold, and it's a interesting concept. It's not as um, What's the word where because the ring it's paramount they destroy the ring and in, in, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and this is just about these dwarves getting their home back, and Sauron is mentioned and the ring is there, but it's not the main centerpiece like it is in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and I like the meeting he has with Saruman, uh, the elves and and Saruman ultimately dismissing the fact that Sauron's is going to come back and. It's fun to see him before he turns on that side of Sauron. It's fun to see that. And um, I, when you guys go on a marathon, do you watch these movies first and then you watch The Lord of the Rings after? Or is it vice versa? Uh, it's a, This is an interesting prequel to have for, the, for those movies. And I feel like the character of Bilbo will hold more significance too after you watch these three movies. And, and um, Martin Freeman, who plays Bilbo... He was in Sherlock, he was in um, um, The World's End. He was in several movies I've seen him in, and he was really good in Sherlock. And he plays a really good uh, younger Bilbo. I, it's A younger Bilbo and Frodo are two different people in terms of how they look at things. You know, because Frodo, I, didn't, I don't remember him bitching that much about how oh, I missed, uh, I wish... I wish I just sit there and just sit on my armchair. He does miss the Shire, but he isn't as upset as F Bilbo is throughout the first and second half. But but it was him as the main character, the Hobbit of the movie. He, he was good. I do miss Sam. <laughs> Sam was my guy. Was my anchor. I I relied on Sam a lot through the, that trilogy. He was my he was my man, my man, and um. Him missing is definitely a big, big, big shame. I was hoping I would see him in the beginning when Frodo was there, but oh well. But it was great to see Gandalf the Grey because I saw an interview with Ian McCallum saying, um, after I watched the three movies, um, I was a bit 
obsessed a little bit. And Ian McCallum was saying, I, I like Gandalf the Grey, I just don't like Gandalf the, the White. And apparently he doesn't like his personality. And I'm like, hmm. And when you think about it, they are two different things. They're two different people with their personality. I feel like Gandalf the Grey has more of a, in the trilogy, the other trilogy, has more of a connection to the Hobbits, and more of a um, care. But Gandalf the White, they, he cares for him, but he sees them more of they have to succeed for the ring, for you know, Middle Earth to be saved and from Sauron. But at the same point of me, counter argument is at the end, they have that nice reunion and the, the Fellowship of the Ring did. And I like the, the dwarves and well, they, they have no home. They're trying to go back to the Lonely Mountain to, to, to seek what was taken away from him from that dragon. And we had some exposition at the beginning. And um, most of them were comedy, were used for comedy purposes, and that's fine. And the main guy, he was kind of the Aragorn of, the, of, the, of this movie, where he's, he's the next in line, and he wants to take his home. And, and he's like the guy who you're supposed to root for in a way. And I root for the most is Bil Bilbo. Bilbo is obviously the guy, is the one you, you root for the most. And But having him he kind of fills that aragorn hole a little bit because he's a guy who is next in line and he wants to he's very vengeful as well and he holds grudges and when it comes to the elves too and in certain ways you understand it and in other ways you don't and when gandalf gets angry at him as well it's funny and he pulls the strap and walks off that scene with the trolls too and snot oh that was and he was itching his ass too and there was some Gnarly moments, <laughs> gnarly, disgusting moments, or unhygienic moments. Uh, but yeah, it's not like I feel like the first trilogy was so, it was like a massive journey, and they had so many likable, interesting characters. This one is a pre, as a prequel, is a good prequel. Many prequels, <laughs> bless me, many prequels do so from the issue of being, you know. They don't offer much and they don't come off as necessary and because it's a prequel it is it is very predictable that has that but there's a lot of room for information and to learn new things and to see more of gandalf and his relationship with bilbo and how how that builds up and seeing bilbo and and um and seeing bilbo interact with smeagol and that great scene with the riddles and trying to play this game with um smeagol and smeagol is trying to play, but go um, Gollum wants just wants to kill him, and when he finds out he stole the ring, it was like, oh shit! And um, I just sometimes I feel like he's such a tragic character. He's kind of a p pathetic, sad little thing. At the same time, though, he's a fucking loony bin psychopath. But you yeah, kind of feel for him at the same time, and. I'm sure we will see him later on in this trilogy. I assume we will. And I think the ring will become more of an important thing throughout the rest of this trilogy, maybe, when Gandalf finds out about it. But, um, yeah, it, it's going to be good, though, watching this. And then when I do rewatch the other trilogy, when Gandalf has seen Bilbo again in the in the first movie, in the Shire, and all, oh, hi, and it'll make me feel more emotional. So that's where prequel can work sometimes. And having a great actor like Martin Freeman playing a younger Bilbo, it, that, that is believable and it works effectively. It, it's good. And the final battle, uh, it's not really a battle. It's it's very, the formula is kind of similar to Fellowship of the Ring. It really is. You got these, you know, 14 of them, right? And I know you haven't got many in the Fellowship of the Ring. I forgot how many. I, I'm going to say around nine, eight, I forgot how many they are. It's a small number trying to achieve a really big goal, right? And so you got Gandalf leading the way, and you got a hobbit that is, you know, hobbits in the other trilogy, but you got this hobbit who is very, is looked down on, he's got no chance, but proves himself, has a lot of, has a lot of heart and courage like the other hobbits. I think that's a common characteristic of most hobbits, is they got big balls, and they have, they have courage. And I like when Gandalf says to him, courage is so, it's not about killing when you have to. It's about, you know, letting him go. And like what he did to Gollum. He could have killed Gollum. And he probably would have done him, done him and his nephew and his nephew's
best friend Sam a lot of good. But it was great hearing the the Shire music as well. I I just love that. And when he sees the ring and he does like I like those parts of it too. And it's visually it looks visually fantastic. And if you want to watch Flame for reactions to this, you can on my Patreon where you can watch Flame for reactions to every movie and TV show I watch on Patreon with the reference footage. You don't have to sync up. It's all there for you. And um, I will see you guys next time and have a good day.